Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this session of the Data Doctor. Today, we're going to talk about a, a topic that's a little bit more difficult than things I've talked about in the, in the past. Today, we're going to talk about fiscal year calculations, and we're going to talk how to do year-over-year -year calculations, year-to-date, quarter-to-date, month-to-date, and then how to determine the variances year-over-year uh, -year or period-over-period -period with those calculations. I want to take you first in to show you the Tableau default for fiscal year and how you can use table calculations. And then I want to take you into something that's a, a whole lot deeper than that. And this is a topic that comes up very often out on the forum in questions, and it's a very difficult topic uh, to actually do. First, let's start with uh, a little definition. What is a fiscal year? Well, a physical year is usually defined by your finance department or an accounting department, and it's any time period or, or, or accounting period a calendar that uh, they want to use that doesn't start on January 1st, okay? It'll start on some other month of the year, and the example I'm going to show you here, and I'm going to use kind of throughout, uh, throughout the presentation, starts in uh, July, although I'll show you how uh, your user can change that starting period. It starts in July, so July of 2022, July the 1st, starts fiscal year 2023. And the first quarter of fiscal year 2023 is July, August, and September, and the second is October, November, and December, and so on. So the fiscal year and the calendar year don't necessarily align at all. And I wanna show you the default and how you, uh, how you would go about creating that you can go, and I've already created one here. I've uh, created a uh, fiscal year for the order date starting in July. And if you just open this up by right clicking it and go down to default properties, fiscal year start, you can select what, what month of the year that the physical year will start. And if we lay that out, and I've started this with July, you can see that for the order date, uh, the fiscal years 20 through or 19 through 23, and how the calendar months align with those fiscal years. Each fiscal year starts in July and runs through June. You can also see for the data that we've got, and I'm using Superstore data like I always do. Uh, for the data we've got, we have no data for the first half of fiscal year 2019 or for the last half of the year 2023. Well, you can use a uh, you can uh, you can use this table calculation to calculate the year over year variance. And all this does, and we've talked about table calculations before. All this does is look at the sales in the current period, and then looks up the sales in the past period, takes the difference of those, and divide by the sales of the past period. But you can see from the calendar, we've got that this data is missing the first half of fiscal year 2019. So these values are all, all skewed and they're different than what you would expect. And these values are missing the last half of 2023 and they likewise are all skewed and they're not, uh, they're not what you would expect. But for fiscal year 21 and 22, the values are correct. Now, if that meets your goal, that's fine. And I would suggest that you use that and filter just like you would using calendar year, year over year calculations and table calculations. But most people want to see something that looks like this, where they can calculate the current year to date sales and the prior year to date sales and calculate the variance on that, and quarter to quarter sales and month to month sales and calculate the variances. And they want to do it based on their fiscal year. Now, this gets into a very, uh, a very deep calculation. Now, I want to take you back to how we solve this problem using calendar years. And if you've ever come out to the forum and you posted a question where you're doing year-over-year -year analysis, you probably got an answer from me back that said, uh, I want you to use a fixed end date, and you fix the end date with a parameter, and then we wrote some LOD formulas, or they might not be LOD formulas, but we wrote some formulas for current year to date and past year to date, and then did the cal uh, did the calculation. Let's take a look at what that might look like. First, we create a 
uh, we create a parameter. And this will take a second to open up for the calendar year ending. Well, we're going to do that type of analysis, and it's just it's just a parameter that has a date in it. You need to tell, or the user needs to tell Tableau what's the ending period that you want to calculate. So you calculate the year to date, and this is where the date comes from. It comes from a parameter. Sometimes you would use today, or you might use the max date in the data set, but it has to have an end date that you, uh, uh, you know. And then you would calculate the current year to date. And these are not LODs, but they could be LODs if you had a need for doing it. If you had a, uh, a you wanted to break it out by division or sales region or something like that, you could use uh, uh, a calculation that did that. And we've seen this calculation before. Uh, all this does is check to see that the year of the order date is the same year as the parameter, and the day, the date, the day level date of the order date is less than or equal to the day in the parameter. And then it calculates the sum based on that. And then we'll take the prior year and we do the same thing. And all we do there is decrement this parameter date by one year. And we calculate the sales that, that way. And we've got the current year and the prior year. And then we calculate the variance based on those two values. And this is just a very simple calculation. It's, it's just, Take and take the sum of the current year minus the sum of the prior year, and from that difference, uh, divide that by the uh, by the total for the prior year, and you get a, a a variance. Okay, now it'd be great if we could do that with fiscal years, but unfortunately, all of these calculations, all of these date functions like date trunk and date add, all date functions, then year or month or all of those date functions are based on calendar year. They can't be used with fiscal year. Uh, they just plain don't recognize uh, fiscal year. So we're gonna have to create our own. And we're gonna use an approach that's just right parallel to the approach that I just showed you for using calendar year, but we're gonna create our own key. And that key is going to align directly with each one of the dates. And the key that we're going to use is um, is a string value, and it's based on uh, the physical year that we're uh, a physical year, physical month, physical quarter that we're going to create. It's a ten-digit string, and the first four digits of that string are the physical year. The next two digits are quarter, and all I'm doing here is with uh, and this just concatenates a, a string zero zero in there because I want the I want the quarter to be 01, 02, 03, and not 1, 2, 3, for example. The next two digits are the string month. And again, I use this concatenation because I want the values to be 1 through or 01 through 12. And the last two digits are the physical day. So if we have a physical year that we're going to start on, Jan on uh, July 1st, like in the prior example, we said we're gonna start our fiscal year on July the 1st. This string will start with the first four digits being the fiscal year, which is 2023. That's the first quarter of that fiscal year. So we have an 01. The second quarter of that, or the, the fiscal month is 01, and the date is 01. So that string would be those 10 digits. Now, if we wanted to calculate a year-to-date value through July 15th, we need to know this date, which would be July 15th, and the, uh, the key for that would be 2023-01, still the first quarter, the first month, and the 15th date. And then all we're going to do is we're going to sum all the sales associated with each one of those keys. And that's just exactly what we did um, when we were using calendar dates and, and uh, date functions. Now, it's a little more involved and I wanna take you through each one of these steps just like, uh, just like we did on the calendar date. First, we need to create a parameter for the physical year start month, you know, when we use the default uh, Tableau is set up, it's give us give us a way to set a default 
fiscal year start. Well, we can't use that. So we have to set up a parameter. And all this parameter is, it's an integer parameter with the values one through 12 associated with January through December. It's something that you would set or your user would set one time only. They set that at the beginning uh, of the analysis. So now we know what the fiscal year start date is. And we want to convert that, uh, we want to use this parameter to create that key that we talked about. And to do that, we need to calculate the fiscal year, the fiscal month, the fiscal day, and then I'm going to show you the fiscal quarter. Uh, the fiscal quarter is a very involved calculation. Now, the fiscal year, it, and all this says is if the month is before the start of the fiscal year, then use the use the order date month, uh, the year of the order date year uh, as the fiscal year. And if not, then increment it to the next year. So July 2022 calendar date is actually in fiscal year 2023. So we're adding one year to it. This month just accounts for aligning the months within those uh, within the fiscal year. It just says, look, if that uh, month is less than the fiscal year start date, then you have to start at 13 and subtract where the fiscal year starts and then increment it for each one of the months or else it's just the difference between the order date month and the fiscal year month and we have to add one back to it. And then the fiscal day, we actually use a date function here, it's date part, and we just take that as a string value and we convert it to a string. Now, I'm going to show you a calculation for the quarter. And the quarter date, the fiscal quarter gets really involved. And the formula for it looks like this. I mean, it looks very busy. It looks very difficult. But it's really very simple in concept. All we're going to do is we're going to look at the difference between the fiscal year start and the month of the order date. And if that's greater than zero, and it's also less than three, then it's in the first quarter. If that is less than six, it's in the second quarter. If it's less than uh, nine, it's in the third quarter. And if it's less than uh, 12, it's in the fourth quarter. But we also have to account for the negative values. We have to account for those years when um, that, uh, that precede the, um, uh, precede the actual end date or the fiscal year month start date. And if that value is negative, if the value is less, greater than minus three, then you're in the fourth quarter. If it's greater than minus six, you're in the third quarter, the second quarter, and the first quarter, and so on. It looks like a pretty involved calculation. It is not quite as difficult conceptually, but the mechanics on it are a little difficult to deal with. So, we're going to apply this key, and I'm going to show you where it fits into a key. We're going to use those to create a key, and this is what the key looks like. All we're going to do is we're going to take those values, and we're going to create that string from the, fi the fiscal year, from the fiscal quarter, from the fiscal month, and from the fiscal day, and create this 10-digit key. And we're going to apply that to all the dates in our data set. So for January 18th, for example, that date is in fiscal year 2019. That is the third quarter of that fiscal year. It's the seventh month of that fiscal year, and it's the 18th day. And we could go down here and we could take February 2nd, for example, it's 2019. It is uh, in the third quarter. It's in the eighth month, and it's the second day. So now we've created this relationship between the actual calendar date and the fiscal date that you need to calculate year-to-date calculations and quarter, year-to-quarter and quarter-over-quarter and year-over-year -year calculations using the fiscal date. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is we need to create an end date. Remember in our, our calendar year, we had an end date. We needed to know where you wanted the analysis to stop. 
And just like we did in the uh, uh, in the calendar year, we created an end date parameter. This is based on a user readable calendar date. Okay, because the user has to come in and he has to pick a date. He's not going to pick a physical date. He's going to pick a calendar date that he looks at. And it says, when do you want the analysis to stop? And all it is is a date. This accepts all values. And uh, it's just a very simple to display format. Now we've got to take that date and turn it into a key also. And I'm going to show you that and quite honestly the key for this is very simply it's the same set it's the same set of formulas okay except instead of using the order date so that we have uh, a value for a different value for each value here we're going to use the single value we're going to use the end date and we're going to use it in the series of formulas. And we'll just take a look at a couple of these. We don't have to go into a great deal of detail. Here's the current year end date month. And this is exactly the same formula I just showed you for the, for the, uh, to create uh, the key that we applied to all dates. It's exactly the same formula, except instead of using end, uh, end date or uh, order date in here, we're using that uh, parameter date. And we do the same thing for the quarter. Nasty formula, but all we're doing is subbing in this date for the order date and the year. And from that, we're going to create a key for the current fiscal end date. And it looks just like the key we used before, except we're subbing in this, these values that we created for the fiscal year and the fiscal month end based on uh, the parameter, based on the user input, the quarter and the day. And as you can see here, because this value is set as a parameter, the value for the end date is always the same. So for 9, which is September 20, uh, 9 30, 2020, that key date is 2021. So that's fiscal year 2021. That's in the first month or the uh, first quarter of 2021. It's the third month and it's the 30th day. Okay. Now, what we're going to do uh, next is we're going to create the calculation that does the year over year uh, summation. And these formulas, if you look at them, they're, they're directly aligned with the formulas that we use when we had a calendar year. All we're going to do is we're going to take a look on the year-to-date analysis, and we're going to see if the fiscal year uh, in the data, the key that we created for the data, that fiscal year, is the same as the fiscal year for the end date that we just looked at. And also, are the days, the fiscal, the key for the days in that uh, database, each one of those, uh, each one of those dates, are they less than or equal to the end date of the uh, parameter that we just created? So that's directly analog uh, analogous to what we did with uh, with the calendar year. The month we're doing the same thing. We're looking: are, are, is it the same year and the same month, and the date is less than uh, the end date? If so, then sales. And for the quarter. Same thing again, if the year and the quarter are the same as the end date parameter and the date is less than the end date, then sales. So this is directly analog uh, analogous to the uh, what we did with the uh, calendar dates. And it would look like this, okay? If I've got an, a fiscal year that starts in July, and I've got an end date that the user input of 9, 30, 20, or the end of September. So we've got the end of September. Our month to date is this value of 64,000. Our quarter to date are the values in that first quarter, that's July, where the year started, 
and the quarter started, August and September, and our year to date are those three values. And if we increment that end date, if the user says, no, I wanna look at the year to date values through uh, October 31st, we can see the values change. We're now looking at October. October's in the second quarter. So the October uh, quarter and the, or uh, the uh, second quarter date and the October values are the same. And now the year to date includes that. We could increment that again, just for example, here we go out to November, and now we see the quarter includes October and November, and the year to date includes all those dates. And just to show you, if we looked here and we only wanted to look through the 13th of the month, for example, now we've got November through the first 13 days and the quarter and also the year to date. So those formulas are doing exactly what we want, and it it looks a little uh you don't have to see all this data. As a matter of fact, we can just look at the summary data. So we've got our current month to date, quarter to date, and year to date. Now we've got to go back and we've got to determine the prior year sales because you want to compare current year to prior years. And we've got to create some formulas to do that. Now, we're also going to have a prior year key. And I'm going to show you here and then I'm going to show you in the calculations also. The prior year key is nothing more than the current year key. We're going to decrement the year by one year. And the rest of the, the rest of these values are the same. And then, no surprise here, these formulas for year to date are directly uh, aligned with the ones that we did for the current year. So if the if the fiscal year equals the prior year end date and the day key is less than the prior year end date, the key for the prior year end date, then sales. This is the same formula that we used for month, except we're substituting in prior year. And we have to make one change here. And this is where it gets a little tricky, but because when we get to the first month, if the current month is the first month and we want to go to the prior month, we have to go not to the first month, but to the 12th month, but we also have to change the year. We have to go back one year, one fiscal year. And that's all this formula does. If it's any month but the first month, all we have to do is go back one fiscal month. And then the prior quarter, we're doing the same thing. We take a look and see if the current quarter is the first quarter. If we go back one quarter, then we have to go back to the fourth quarter of the previous year. That's all this formula does. And if uh, we're working on any quarter, but the first quarter, all we have to do is reduce the quarter by one month. Okay, so that looks like this. Enough, uh, enough formulas. Let's take a look at what's actually happening here. These are the values that I showed you before. They're the same values for the current month to date, quarter to date, year to date. And we want to calculate the prior month to date, the prior quarter to date, and the prior year to date. And those are the formulas that, uh, that I showed you, uh, and we created uh, we created before. Let's just open that up, and we'll just take a look at this value. It looks a little messy, okay? But all this first part of the formula does is it says, look, if I'm at the if my current month is uh, the first month of the fiscal year, then I've got to go to the twelfth month of the prior year. If it's anything else, then I only have to go back one month. And the same sort of thing for quarter that we just showed you. And there's the year, year to date prior. And I'm just going to bring this over here. And just like I did before, I want to show you that it that it's working properly. Here's September. Let's ink, let's take a look at October. We go to October. We've got October sales. We've got current year October sales. It's the current quarter. October, the prior month should be September. Okay, sure enough, we're looking at September. We've got the quarter to date. We're in the second quarter. We should be in the first quarter. Yes, we are. And the current year versus the prior year. And we're going to increase that by one set of values also. Okay, and we can look here at uh, month to month. Now we've got quarter to quarter and year to year. And just like I did before, let's take this back and we'll look at some other date and we can see that these things are decrementing properly. Okay, so now we've got the current year sales and we've got the prior year sales. 
But we've got one other type of calculation that we need to account for. Sometimes users want to look, oh, I, I'm sorry, once again, you don't have to look at all that detail. You can take all that detail out and we can just look at the current month, quarter, and year versus the prior month, quarter, and year. There's one other type of detail that we want to look at. Sometimes users want to look at the same period, but the prior year. So if I'm here in October of 2022, I want to see the value that happened in October of 2021. But I want to see it on a fiscal year basis, or I want to see it on a quarter basis. And those formulas are really fairly simple. You know, it's just uh, here if the uh, if the fiscal year equals the prior year and the month equals the current month, then uh, sum the sales. And this just accounts for the year variation. And the same thing here with the quarter. If the fiscal year equals the prior year and the quarter equals the current quarter, then uh, account for the date difference between the current end period and the uh, the end period one year uh, previous. And we'll get measures that look like this. We're no longer looking at the immediate preceding month, but we're looking at the month of, I want to, I left that at November. I want to take it back to September so that we all start out at the same point. So we had September of 20. We want to see fiscal year September of 19 and quarter to quarter and year to year. Okay. And once again, hey, hey, sorry, Jim, sorry to stop you over here. Yes. I have to jump in another meeting. So what I will do, I will keep this meeting on and I will join that meeting. So once you have finished, you can just go ahead and exit this meeting, right? And I will come back and stop it. Okay. Okay. Very good. I've got about uh, three more minutes and we're done, but uh, very good. I'll, sure, uh, sure. I'll see you next month. Sure, sure, Jim. Yeah, I, I will. I will talk to you on Twitter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we can take a look and we've got summary data that looks like this. We've got current month, current quarter, year to date, prior year, prior year, and prior year sales. Now, all that's left to do is we're going to calculate the variances. And the variances are those very simple calculations that we saw before. Okay. And we've got a month to date variance. And we're going to take a look. And that's just nothing more than the sum of the current month to date sales versus minus the prior month to date sales divided by the prior month to date sales. And we do the same sort of thing for quarter. The current quarter minus the prior quarter divided by the prior quarter which is what you wanted all along. And now we can come back and we can look at values that look like this. And we've got the current, the prior and the variance, both in terms of year, quarter and month to date. You could make those table or you could make those uh, LOD expressions if you had a need to do that, if you were working with different divisions or different sales regions, for example. Now I've shown you a lot of formulas and the good news is you don't have to do any copying of formulas or redevelop any of those formulas. This workbook is already sitting out on my Tableau public site. You can go out to my Tableau public site. You can use this link or just go to my Tableau public site. And it is this first, this first, uh, uh, this first page on my Tableau public site. Just open that up, download the workbook. It's completely downloadable and you can go from there. The second uh, thing that you can do, everything we've talked about, I've put in a blog. All the equations are out there. I suggest you download the workbook and, and use the workbook as your model. But everything we've talked about is already on my blog and you can get to my blog at this site or it's just jimdaner.com. And it is this first uh, this first page right here. You can open it up. You can use it. You can download that also. I thank you for your time. I look forward to meeting with you again next month. Bye now.